Hello friends, this is Pradeep from Tech and Training Corporate Solutions. In this video, I'm going to talk about Pareto Principle. When you talk about Pareto Principle, it is nothing but 80-20 rule. It means 20% are the reasons for 80% causes. As an example, the statement is very well valid that 20% people holds 80% of global wealth. I can also say 20% of products of a company generates 80% revenue. We can also say the income tax paid by 20% people is utilized for 80% of the country's population. So this 80% and 20% principle or Pareto principle is applicable in almost every situation or scenario in our daily life. But when we talk about Excel, it is extremely simple to create Pareto principle or Pareto chart. But in Power BI, it is not so easy. So let us see how do we create Pareto chart in Power BI. So in this video, you can see on the left hand side, this table contains all the product details like the product names, the total sales with respect to each product and the cumulative percentage. On the right hand side, this chart is called as Pareto chart, which talks about 80-20 principle. If you look at this chart, this green color columns are nothing but total sales. Now this red color line is nothing but cumulative percentage. And this is the 80% line which cuts the cumulative percentage line at 80% exactly, indicating that these are the three products which generates 80% of the revenue. So you can say these are the 20% of the products which generates 80% revenue of this company. So friends, let us see how do we create a Pareto chart in Power BI. You can see that in the relationships tab, I have these products table is connected to order details table with one to many relationship. So this relationship has to be there. So let us take a look at the data. If you take a look at the products table, products table contains unique product and their respective details which is connected to order details table which contains a column which is called as total sales now first thing is i would like to calculate the pareto principle based on the total sales so i will create a measure in power bi which is total sales now I'll type equal to, I'll write a function, a simple measure that is sum of total, total sales column which belongs to order details table. So as you can see that I have created a measure, I will put it into the home table which is order details table. So in order details table, I have created a measure total sales. I'll create a simple table of products name and total sales. So here is the total sales and the products table. Let me increase the font. Let me sort this table in descending order. So here are the products with respect to their details. The biggest challenge over here is to create the cumulative total. In order to create cumulative total, we first of all have to create the rank of each of these products. So in order to create rank, I'll create another measure which will be rank function. I will use a DAX function called as rank x. This rank function is asking for a table name. So I'll write the table name as all products, comma, the expression is going to be total sales. Now, what this function means is I would like to rank all their data from the products table, that is this data, on the basis of total sales. Now, when I press enter, you can see that this has been ranked properly. So, as you can see, the first highest product is this one. The second product is this, third, four, fourth, fifth and sixth. So, we have ranked them properly. Now, after creating the rank, now the main task starts to get the cumulative total. In order to get the cumulative total, it is going to be a little complex function. So friends, let me write the cumulative function first and then I'll explain what is the meaning of each of those DAX function that I'm using here. So first of all, I'll write cumulative total equal to, I'll write 
I'll use the function sum x, which is a tax function. It is asking for a table. So let me use top n function to create a table. For n value, I'm going to use the rank function that I have already created. So this is the measure that I'm using within the table all product name. I close the bracket and now I type order by expression. Now I would like these tables to be created or the cumulative total to be created based on the total sales. So I write the measure total sales once again and I would like it to be in descending order. So I select descending order. So this is the table. Now it is asking me for an expression. Now the entire thing revolves around total sales. So I write total sales. Now when I use this sumx function, you will see that I have been able to create proper cumulative total of each of these values. So friends, before we proceed ahead, let me tell you that this sumx function or this cumulative total adds total sales at each row. Since this formula is little complicated or complex, I'm going to first explain the sumx function. Now sumx function will calculate the table and the expression. Now, the table is given by top n function and expression is nothing but total sales. Now this top n function, when the rank is 1, it will only return this particular row, right? So sumx function will add this total row and since we have only one value which is 71,155, it is going to place that value here. Then this top n function is going to return two rows. Why two rows? Because this rank will change to two. Now this top n function will return two rows. So this row as well as this row. So of course, when it gets the table of two rows, the sumx function will only add these two rows. So when you get only these two rows, it will add these two rows. Then this top n function will receive rank number three. That means it is going to return three rows and hence over here it will add these three rows. Now what is this top end function? Before I explain that top end function, let me open another program which is called as DAX Studio. Because this is a complex function, I would like to use DAX Studio to make you all understand. So since this Power BI file is already open, I click on PPI and select this rank.dax function or the Power BI file and click on connect. Now over here, I will just copy and paste this rank function. I will type evaluate and paste it. Now, instead of this rank function, I type one. Because this is one, when this rank returns one value, top end function will return one single row based on the total sales. When this rank value is 2, top n function will return 2 rows. So when you receive the table of 2 rows, these, these two values will get added and this will be supplied. When I make it 3, I'll run it again. Now this top n function will give me product table with 3 products and hence these 3 will get added because some x will add these three product because we have written total sales as an expression so these three rows will get added the next problem is this total we don't need this total so what we'll do i'll write this function if as one value product name comma that means as long as this product name contains one value it will continue giving us the cumulative total but over here, there is no product name. So, what I will say is, if this condition is true, keep calculating the cumulative total. But if this condition is false, then replace it with blank. So, I'll use a blank function. Now, you see, automatically that last thing is gone. Similarly, I can make the changes in the rank function also. If as one value which is again product stable then 
as long as this contains value generate the rank otherwise leave the cell blank and close the bracket and see it now disappears so we have got the cumulative total and the rank now i need a cumulative percentage in order to get cumulative percentage i need to divide this value with the total value right so i create a new measure total sales of all products yeah so i'm just giving the lengthy name for this now i'll write the sum x function now here because it is asking for table and we need a column also it should ignore all the filter context i'll use all function and type the column name as product name which belongs to products table comma i will need the total sales now i close the bracket and press enter as you can see that this total sales is going to give me the total sales across all the rows now i actually don't need total sales of all product but we need cumulative percentage so dividing this value with this value is going to give me the cumulative percentage so in order to calculate cumulative percentage i will use a divide function now numerator is going to be cumulative total denominator is going to be total sales of all products alternative result in any weird situation if it re returns any kind of error message then it should be taken care or replaced with zero i press enter now we get this cumulative percentage right so this is nothing but cumulative percentage because it is not visible as a percentage i'll select that measure i'll go to modeling tab and select percentage up to two decimal places so as you can see that we have got cumulative percentage now friends so we have got total sales as well as cumulative percentage now i don't need cumulative total i don't need rank i don't need total sales of all products i just need these two columns total sales and cumulative percentage that serves the purpose to be honest i don't even need this total row so i can hide that total row by going to this fo format i can i can go to total and i can turn it off so i don't need any of these totals so friends now that we have got cumulative percentage and the total let us create a pareto chart so in order to create a pareto chart i will need this particular chart which is line and clustered column chart now over here i will simply first of all add the total sales which is nothing but this total sales with respect to the product name so these are the different products and this is the total sales as you can see the product names are not sorted in descending order with respect to total total sales i will click on this three dots and arrange this chart by total sales so i'll select sort by total sales now you can see that these values are arranged in descending order starting with highest total to lowest total let me increase the x axis label to 16 and let me also increase the y axis labels to again 16 okay now when we see this title of the chart again that is to be increased so i go to title and i increase it to 16 now i've changed this title to 16 what i'll do i will add one more field which is cumulative percentage to this data now as you can see that cumulative percentage is a column chart i will simply go to field section and drag this cumulative percentage to line values when i select line values you will see that this is now line which moves from this to 100% we also need the 80% cut off so for that we'll create one more measure and i'll name it as 80% is equal to 0.8 and i will click here and make it a percentage yeah and i'll add this to the table 
As you can see this table, it gives me 80% across. Although we don't need it, but this is just to show you that I have created another column which only has 80%. So let me remove it from this table and add this 80% to this chart, right? Now, I again go to fields table, change this 80%, drag it to line value. So now, as you can see, let me first move the 80% is the first one and this cumulative percentage. So this red line is nothing but cumulative percentage and this black line is the cutoff 80%. As you can see that these 20% products gives 80% revenue of this company. So friends, I believe that you have learned how to be create a Pareto chart. So I hope you would like this video. If you like this video, I would request you to comment on this video as well as share it with all your friends. And do not forget to subscribe the channel. So this is friends. Once again, Pradeep from Tech and Training Corporate Solutions. I'm going to be back with new video on Power BI as well as other productivity tips. Thank you.